Hey guys, so I have a question. Where do you stand on classic Italian risotto? I always feel like it's one of these dishes that's really, really famous, everybody knows it, but not too many people actually love it. Except for the lucky few who have had the chance to try the real deal. Well, I just came back from a little summer break where I had spent a week in Northern Italy and I believe I've been converted into a risotto lover. I am one of them now, guys. So in this video, I'll show you what the original risotto is all about. Then we'll try to make it in the traditional style, which is infamously tedious. So we're also gonna see what types of hacks we can use to make cooking perfect risotto at home a little bit easier. But first, let me take you to the northern Italian region of Lombardy. Guess what? Pizza, pasta, tomatoes, olive oil, all these beautiful Italian things are actually home to the more southern parts of the country. But northern Italy, at least traditionally speaking, is all about rice and corn actually, but that's for another video. Today we're talking about risotto. So together with my buddy Wei Xiang, who you might remember from the channel, we took a little road trip through the beautiful Lombard countryside to find a famous local risotteria, which as you can see, is actually a real thing, even though yes, even in risotto country, these are pretty rare. We actually got a bit overexcited and tried four different types of risotto that day, working our way up from easy mode to the most decadent yeah, This one, one is definitely with, with uh, pistachio. You want to try the pistachio first? Yeah. Okay, let's try pistachio risotto. Okay, let's start with this. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Okay. It's actually very good. This is very traditional, I would say. Cheesy, creamy, with a hint of pistachio. With a hint of pistachio. Rice is really chewy. The al dente thing, they do it well with pasta, they do it just as well with rice. And now let's do go for cacio e pepe. It's just cheese and pepper. Cheese and pepper? Okay. Mm. <laughs> this is... I thought the first one was cheesy. I stand corrected. This one is cheesy. Mm. For some reason, this one is really special as well. It's not basic very at all. Very interesting, very unique flavors. I'm pretty sure that's some really fruity white wine. Wow. Okay, I think I could eat this. Like, just, just that. This is hard to beat. Like, how do they do it? It's so creamy. Mmm, amazing. Anyway, should we? We haven't even gotten to like those were like the sampling plates. It always happens even... to us. Huh? Every time we go on a food tour, we eat much of the first things we try. That's true. This right here. Okay. Whoa! Mm. Mm. Interesting. Red wine, I think. Mm. Mm, for sure. So what you see here is uh, fondue cheese. And it works really well. Yeah, you can really see that. Oh, there's a hair. Yeah, that looks. I like, think it's me. Yeah, it looks like yours. It's something very different. Mm. Mm. Red wine. Yeah. Amazing. Should we go for the crown jewel? Let's try the crown jewel. Pomodori. It's for you. Allora, are you going for the straight for the meat? I think so. I think the first bite should be the best bite. Wait, hold on. Must take close up. This is what I came to Italy for. Risotto Milanese. Delicious bite with veal shank and rice. Are you ready to try it? I am so ready. Hold on. I need to refocus. <laughs> That's just how it goes. Okay, cheers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's very good. I think saffron and risotto is like a match made in heaven. It's fantastic. I think it's really delicious. I'm not crazy about the bone marrow, but the beef shank itself, I think, is really, really tasty. All I can honestly say is all four varieties are amazing. No exaggeration, my mind was completely changed on risotto. And somewhat unsurprisingly, the key to a great risotto is the texture. You want firm individual grains of rice with a good bite, but they must be covered in their own starchy sauce that is creamy and luxurious without getting slimy. And at the same time, this unique mouthfeel is being paired with rich, buttery, cheesy, decadent flavors. A perfect example, and perhaps the most impressive of the four risotti that we tried, was the cacio e pepe. Like most of us, I am a big, big fan of the original pasta version, right? Its beauty lies in its simplicity. It's pretty much just lots of pecorino cheese and pepper, and that's it. But this risotto, you guys, I know you can't really see it, 
But trust me, this was by far the cheesiest thing I had ever put in my mouth. And it was glorious. One thing I didn't even know back then and only found out later, it was actually invented by culinary god Massimo Bottura in 2012 after an earthquake hit the region that produces Parmesan cheese and then damaged hundreds and hundreds of wheels of this highly treasured cheese. And so to save what was left of the cheese, Massimo Bottura started like playing around and experimenting and he found this like really cool way of grating parmesan, boiling it down, and then extracting both a parmesan cream and also an extremely thick and ultra cheesy broth. Oh, and then, of course, you use those two to make a risotto that basically just becomes the cheese. And yeah, that's exactly what Wei Xiang and I were eating, so, you know, no wonder we were both like... <laughs> And you know, I don't want to be disrespectful or anything, but if I'm allowed to have one tiny complaint about this, it was that that was some intense shit. You kind of want to take a nap after you've had this risotto. But inspired by this, I had another idea. What if we try turning another classic Italian pasta dish into a risotto? And I shall choose pasta pesto. Whew. I don't know, can it be done? Spoiler alert, it can be done. But first, we need to actually learn the basics. How do you even make a traditional risotto? Well, let's follow the traditional recipe, but let me warn you, it's pretty annoying. Now, the OG recipe doesn't actually start with rice, it starts with heating up some stock. I'm using veggie stock here, but any type will do. Cooking the rice in stock rather than water is what gives it its trademark deep umami richness. Once at a simmer, it's usually kept on a low flame next to your risotto pot because we will be adding it gradually to the risotto and it has to be hot for some reason. But I will just go ahead and add it to a thermos. Seriously? Italy? <laughs> The country of great minds like Leonardo da Vinci. And nobody has thought of putting the hot stock in a thermos before. Really? But now before I overheat here, let's talk about rice. This is Carnaroli rice. It is grown in northern Italy and considered by many to be the king of risotto rice. It has a pretty long and very plump grain and contains just the right type of starch. Now, I just happen to have been in Italy, so I bought that rice there. You can find it online, but you know what? There are definitely other options. We'll get to that later. For now, let's try sticking to the traditional recipe. So I'll be using one cup of Carnaroli rice. In a medium saucepan, I'll melt a knob of butter and also some olive oil. I was gonna saute a shallot here, but I forgot. It's okay. It won't affect the final result too much. Now we're adding the rice and this is a really important step. Watch, saute the dry, unwashed rice in the fat until it just begins to get toasty. Set your flame to medium low, pour yourself half a cup of dry white wine. Cheers to Italy, but this will of course go into our rice and you wanna stir that in immediately. It only takes a quick minute or so for the wine to get absorbed and that's when we'll begin adding our hot stock. Bit by bit, stirring at least every 30 seconds and only adding the next batch of stock when everything has been absorbed by the rice. And oh, you have to use a wooden spoon to do this. Many Italians will actually insist. And so this whole spiel will go on for roughly 17 to 20 minutes until you've added about two and a half times the volume of the rice in stock. Apparently, the constant stirring here causes starch to release from the rice and thicken the sauce. Can you tell why I'm calling the traditional recipe annoying yet? The rice should have a good firm bite to it, but if the center is still grainy and hard, then just go for another minute and repeat. This is what my risotto looked like at this stage, just a tiny bit soupy, but that's actually okay, because now we're adding a bit of cold butter from the fridge, it's gotta be cold for emulsification, and a generous grating of Parmesan cheese. And now we're stirring everything in vigorously. This process will let things blend together and thicken into one homogenous, heavenly creamy sauce. And honestly, all this needed were a few slaps of pepper, a little sprinkle of chives, and all I had to say was, whoa. <laughs> the texture was perfect. The flavor, deep and rich. So yeah, the traditional method of course works, but as I enjoying it, I was also contemplating a few important questions. Does it really have to be Carnaroli rice? Do I really have to constantly keep adding new stock and stirring for like 20 minutes? And most importantly, 
do I really have to use a wooden spoon? Well, actually, a little bit surprisingly, the answer is a half a yes to the wooden spoon and a clear no to the rest. Let's start again and first discuss the rice conundrum. You see, rice is mostly made up of starch, but if you break that down even further, there are two different main types of starch in rice amylose and amylopectin. Because of their molecular structure, these two behave quite differently when they're cooked. And that actually explains why different types of rice, which all have different ratios between amylose and amylopectin, will have different textures. Most long grain rice, like basmati for example, is fairly high in amylose, which makes it fluffy and crumbly after cooking. That is pretty cool, but a no-go for risotto, because we need creaminess. And that brings us to the other end of the spectrum, short or round grain rice, which is usually low in amylose and therefore tends to be creamy and sticky after cooking. Remember that perfect carnaroli rice? Well, it actually happens to be more on the short grain spectrum, even though it has a fairly long grain. But then also the ratio of amylase and amylopectin is just right, and that's what gives you this perfect risotto. But you know what? And I know I'm gonna make a lot of Italians mad with this, but this is definitely not the only type of rice that can give you good risotto. So I did quite a bit of testing and I found that pretty much most regular short grain or sushi rice will get you at least 90% of the way to perfection. And you know, even those last 10%, I gotta trick up my sleeve for those. So my preferred and much, much simpler method begins with a skillet. Ideally a non-stick skillet, they work beautifully for this. Add some olive oil, no need for butter, we're gonna add enough later, and this time I will not forget to add a finely minced shallot, which I like to saute until nice and caramelized. Now I'm gonna add one measure, that's one cup in my case, of generic brand short grain rice and doing the whole toasting thing. This step is really important, it keeps the risotto from getting soupy. Then add half a measure of white wine and stir that in, just like you would in the traditional method. Except that now we're gonna completely go off the rails and add one full measure of stock, give everything just one very quick stir, then cover the rice with a lid, the lid is very important, and then turn the heat down to low and let the rice steam. About 18 minutes later, you should have perfectly cooked plump grains reminiscent of rice pilaf or something like that. If they're not cooked through yet, add a splash of stock and steam for another two minutes. Now this is obviously not a risotto yet, right? It needs to be a lot more creamy, which means we need to add more liquid. And we're gonna take care of that now. The thing is, if we had added more stock in the beginning, we'd just end up with a slimy mess. But if we simply add more stock now, the sauce would get way too soupy because there's just not enough uncooked starch left to thicken the sauce up, unless we add it in. So, in the Food Lab by Kenji Lopez Alt, there's a pretty cool article on risotto in there, and he suggests actually washing the dry, untoasted rice in the stock that you're gonna be using for the cooking. The surface starch from the rice gets into the stock and you get like a self-thickening liquid. I love the idea. I've tried it and it works, but to be 100% honest, I'm a little bit too lazy, and I think that's just one step too much. Instead, here's another idea. How about you hit your Asian grocery store? You might be familiar with Asian sticky rice, also called glutinous rice, and guess what? It happens to have virtually no amylose, which makes it quite similar to risotto rice. And you can simply pick up a bag of conveniently pre-ground sticky rice flour. This is totally my secret ingredient for making risotto. Simply add one teaspoon of it to another full cup of stock and whisk it in. Oh, and between us, while that sticky rice flour is perfect, you can totally use any other type of starch. Now add the starchy broth to the rice and bring to a simmer on medium low. You should see it thicken pretty much right away. Now finish with a good knob of butter and parmesan, so at least the beginning and end of this process are reminiscent of the traditional way. And oh, let's get back to the wooden spoon here. I actually do recommend using a wooden spoon. Most other tools would either be too sharp or too hard and you would smoosh the rice and out of all the weird old school tips, the wooden spoon is indeed the one I'm gonna pass on to you. Now you can't tell me that does not look like the creamy risotto of your dreams. I fixed myself another tiny sample and let me tell you, to me, this is every bit as good as the original. But don't forget, we just learned all of that technique because we are actually on a mission, right? To create a pasta pesto inspired risotto. 
and we're getting close. All that's missing is the pesto. So let's clarify. This plant of basil might be a hint. We're aiming for something reminiscent of the classic pesto genovese. But keep in mind that pesto is a category and there are a million different varieties. So you're gonna need a lot of basil leaves, around 50 grams, and here's why. When you scrunch them up, you can see how little that actually is in terms of volume. But FYI, this scrunching is actually a hack to bruise the leaves, which will help with flavor extraction. Speaking of which, I know a lot of people insist that only a mortar and pestle can be used to make a good pesto, which I will respectfully disagree with. Bruising the leaves and using any type of food processor is completely fine with me, but that's just my opinion. Now I'm also gonna be adding a few toasted pine nuts for texture and flavor, a small clove of garlic, a few cracks of pepper, and one freshly shaved piece of lemon zest, which is a game changer for this pesto. Now just a little splash of both olive oil and optionally some of our stock, just to help the food processor along, and here we go. Blend until somewhat smooth, don't overdo it, and you should get a pesto that is um, a pretty good, but also a little bit underwhelming. But why, you might be asking? Well, it's the salt, my dudes, or the absence of it. And guess why I didn't add any? Because this is not a standalone pesto, but an addition to our risotto, which is already plenty salty. So same goes for the Parmesan cheese, it's already in there. But now, the biggest weakness of any risotto is always its appearance. Sorry, not sorry, but it's the truth. Green color definitely helps here, but even though I am the worst at plating, I think we can do better. Let's finish this with a fresh grating of Parmesan cheese, three charred cherry tomatoes, and a handful of pine nuts. Signori e ragazzi, this is my take on the classic Italian risotto. It's fresh, it's lemony, and yet it's ultra rich and creamy. I really hope you give this one a try and maybe just maybe you as well can become a risotto convert.